Hi everyone, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage. And tonight we're gonna work on the brakes on the 356. So we were out at Coffee and Cars last weekend and I noticed when I was going to a stop that the car was pulling pretty hard to the right, which means the brakes on the left side are a little weak. So I'm gonna get into that tonight and take you along and we'll see what we see. So that's up next on Heidi and Franny's Garage. Okay, so we have our wheel off, and this is our brake drum. We're gonna go ahead and pull the cap off this. This is the front left of the car, obviously. Uh, this is the side that has the speedometer cable hooked up to it, so we're gonna have to take our little cotter pin off here. It's so teeny. Did the little one. Well, yeah. Probably the easiest way to get this off is just with a big screwdriver, and you can kind of push it in there, bang it a bit, and it'll come out. go. This one is clamped on with a set screw here. So it's just basically a clamp bolt. So we're going to use a little, uh, we're going to use an Allen wrench to get that off. All right, that's nice and loose. Well, one thing you might be noticing is that I'm, these are left hand threads. Loosen to tighten, tighten to loosen. That's on this side of the car. There'll be right hand threads on the other side of the car. And they're awfully greasy. Now there's a big washer here as well. There we go. And what we're looking for in here is any sign of any type of wetness or something that would be causing these brakes to not grab the way they should. Okay, these are the top of the pads. And see how they're nice and shiny like that? That's not really a good thing at all. Front wheel has two brake cylinders. So down here, two slave cylinders. This one and this one. It looks a little bit wet down there, doesn't it? And there's an awful lot of schmutz on there as well. I think at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the, uh, the slave cylinders themselves and see, I, I have a couple of rebuild kits for them, so I might as well just do that and replace the seals on those things as well. Okay, so next step is going to be to take the whole brake shoes off and all of that, so I'll get to that. Basically what you do with these guys is you push in and turn. There we go. Just pull those guys back there. You can use your finger to kind of hold the pin from the other side. All right, okay, so now we've got these these other very big springs here, they're uh, under a bit of tension as well. We just need to pop this off and we can, there we go, see, no crazy. There we go, one brake shoe that needs to be cleaned and another brake shoe that needs to be cleaned. You. Yeah, this is all a big old mess. I'm going to go ahead and start with a little cleaning. I'm going to get something to put underneath this. Boy, look at this, we have standing goo in here. Look at this, isn't this something? That's just terrible, and I think, I hate to say it, but I think it might be brake fluid. Ooh. If the rear seal was gone, it would probably, I'd probably see a lot of schmutz right around here. What I'm seeing is a tremendous amount down here, which is this guy, it's gotta be. I mean, it's gotta be, this just, this just looks bad. So I think I've got a leaky wheel cylinder. So we'll just, um, I think I'll definitely be rebuilding that. This is just the star adjuster here on this side. And it just rotates back and forth and allows us to adjust the brakes. Well, that's looking a little better, huh? actually have an old electric toothbrush which works pretty well too. Mm -hmm. 
We know this one's really leaking the worst, I think. It was the certainly the dirtiest. Yeah, look at that. See? Ew. Oh my god. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of fluid here. Okay, so there's our rubber booty. We have a new one of those. Alright, this little guy comes out. And on the other side of this is the little rubber piston. It's down in there. And that is what's leaking. Well, the best way to get the rubber seal out is actually to push the brakes. So I might steal Heidi for a minute to get that done. So I've got this brake clamped off and Heidi is going to press softly on the brakes to pull this, get this piston out. So just start pressing on the brakes and I'll tell you when to stop. Yep, slowly, so slowly, slowly. Okay, keep going. Okay, a little bit more. Okay. And just a tad more, just a little smidgen. Okay, that's it. Let go. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay, so this goes in here. That. A little piston goes over the top that. There we go. That feels pretty good, actually. It's this little guy here. We loosen it up. Okay, now we got our bleeder loose. Should be able to push this down now. We'll probably get some fluid coming out. Okay, so we just want to drive our piston back down. Great, so we've got our piston back down. This guy is going to go over the top of it like that. And all that's left is for us to put our little rubber booty over first. Should look something like that when it's done. Alright, so we just fit this rubber guy over the this guy in and fit the rubber guy over at the same time. Okay, I think that's good. I think that's right. Looks good. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead and rebuild the uh, other one as well, the top one. The one thing we don't want to forget to do is to tighten up our little uh, bleeder on the back. That would be pretty disastrous if we forgot that. So do that right now so we don't forget. Okay, so we have our two slave cylinders rebuilt. So I think what I'm gonna do is just get these parts clean, these, and get these parts cleaned over here. While I was cleaning the brake shoes, I noticed, can you see that crack that runs all the way through? There's some other cracks here. These shoes have gotten very hot. So I'm not I'm not super digging that. Luckily, I have another set. So I'm going to go ahead and use this piece instead of the one that was in there already. All right, one thing I want to I want to mention is can you see there's a small chamfer on the end of these pads? It's one on both sides. And the new pad that I have, this one, doesn't have any kind of chamfer on it at all. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the bench grinder real quick and put a small chamfer through. So the little chamfer on there will help keep the pads from sort of shuddering or, or vibrating really bad when they, when they just start to engage. Okay, we have all of our parts cleaned. We have our stars cleaned. Uh, adjustment stars. Very important that these things spin in and out very easily. Also cleaned the inside of the actual drum. So I think we're, we're all set. We're ready to put these back together. One thing to remember about brakes is that there are an awful lot of moving parts here. So from here, there, you can see these pads here. These pads are contact points where the pads actually are going to slide in and out on those things. There's a few places on here that we need to lubricate. I usually use anti-sleeze or aluminum, anti-seize they call it, I call it anti-sleeze. Want to make sure that we put a little dab here and there, wherever there's any wear points on here, 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 and here, on both ends of our brake pads as well, here and here. Also, we're going to want to lubricate our little stars so that they work well as well. So starting with our stars. So our the little stars fit in here. There's a little spring here to keep this so that this thing goes notch by notch. 
So we've got a couple of moving parts. We've got this guy slides in here and that has to be lubricated and we want to make sure that we lubricate our threads as well. But here's the deal with this. Just a dab will do you because you, the last thing you want is a bunch of grease going everywhere on set inside your drum. So here we go, just a touch. You just need a tad, just a little bit on the outside here. Maybe in a couple of spots here. As it fits in here. We don't need much, but it does need to spin. One important point about the stars is the slot is a lot deeper on one side than it is on the other. So that's going to fit with our brake pads as they come across. They're going to fit on there properly. Okay, well I just verified it with the manual and the stars go opposite side of the notch. And this makes sense now. Look at our, look at that cut through this star. See, plenty of room for it in the bottom. You wanna leave the drive on the end of the star screwed in most of the way, maybe out a turn or so for two reasons. One, you're gonna want the brakes completely compressed so that you can get the drum on easily and they're not going to fuss over when you get the drums on. The second reason is when you get the springs and things on these things, it's a lot easier to do if they're completely collapsed. All right, so we have a little dab there, a little dab there, a little dab there, a little dab there. Great. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the end here, both ends. You need just a, just a little bit there. Both sides. I'm just going to set that in there for now. We still have to install our springs. We've got to reattach our springs and we also can't forget our little pins that go in the center of the brake shoes. That, they go in here so they come in from the back. Remember we pop them off first. And there we go. Make sure they're seated. Now our springs. Which one of them goes here and the other one goes here. Notch goes on the opposite side of the star. Okay, so I hook it here and I hook it here. Really, pretty much all that's left is to put the drum back on. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the race back here for the bearings. So this little trick can save you a little bit of brain damage. I use a small camera and go ahead and record, or just take some pictures, just like that, of the inside of the brakes. Now the reason I do that is because yeah, I go to bed tonight and I'm sitting in bed thinking, oh, that was a great time and I was like, wait, wait, wait a minute, did I, wait, did I put the springs in backwards? Did I, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. And then I can always refer back to the photo, go and go look at it really, really carefully and go, yep, 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 I got it together or no, I didn't, which is more important because you certainly don't want to drive off with something completely screwed up. So. Okay, so all that's left is just to put the wheel on. Okay. There we go. Everything feels nice, smooth. Want to make sure we spin it at this point because we want to make sure we don't hear any crunch, crunch, crunchy noises. That would be very, very bad. Next is replace our washer and to set the tension of this bolt. What I like to do to set these is to tighten them up a bit so that there's a decent amount of drag on this. So what I want to do is tighten this down a bit and spin it until you can see noticeable drag. And the reason I'm doing this is to set the grease and make sure that it's working well through the bearings. I'm, I'm not going to leave it here. All right, great. Then we back it off. So it spins nice and freely. So the way I've always set the tension on this 
or the pressure on these bearings is to tighten this bolt enough to where I can just move this washer behind it. You can kind of see it moving now. You never want it so tight that you can't move the washer. That's pretty important. We don't want to forget to set our set screw on the side of this thing. So checking wheel bearings, you want to check them at three and nine and then at 12 and six. So 12 and six, there's nothing. Yep, that feels really good. Okay, we've got our new cotter pin for the speedometer cable here. Just make sure that that goes through, great. Now the trick is we have to get it through the little, there's a little, I don't know if you can see this, a little square hole in the cap. And so the drive for the speedometer here goes through that little square hole and then we put our cotter pin on it. Let's guy out a little bit. I'm gonna pull it out too far. There we go. Put our cotter pin to keep it, there we go. Okay, we're good. I just use a plastic hammer to put this thing in. Works really well. Just feel with your fingers, make sure it's going on nice and straight. Split our cotter pin apart. And that's it. We're all set. Okay, well, I think that concludes for tonight. We still have, obviously, have some things to do. I'm gonna put the wheel back on, of course, and lower the car back down, and then we've got to put the car on the lift. We'll put it up on the lift, and we'll go ahead and bleed the brakes, because I can't drive the car until we bleed the brakes. And I think I've got my leak taken care of, so it's all nice and dry in there. I can't wait to go out and drive the car a little bit. Very excited about it. We'll go through a complete brake adjustment as well. Once we bleed the brakes, we're gonna to need to kind of reset the shoes and all that. I'll pick this up again tomorrow, get the car back down, get it bled, and then go out for a little toodle.